up? How we doing? How we doing? Good morning, Papa. Yeah. Hey. Feels right. Feels right, man. Woo! There you go. That's nice. Yep. Sun death, real quick. Let's get it. Full fuel bar, snacks. Hold up. Oh, yeah, I'll see you around. What's up, Raider Nation? This is Gardner Minshew, man. Just so happy to be here. So excited to get to work and uh, put on a show for y'all this fall. Here we go. Okay, go ahead. And then. Welcome to the 2024 Raiders Free Agency Show. I'm JT with the legend, <laughs> Eric Allen. We're brought to you by Allegiant. We're excited to be here. Yes. Exciting times for the Silver and Black. As they came through, they knocked it out of the park, I thought, with right. a couple of big signings. They retained some of the players. We're off to the races for another season, EA. We are. What an exciting time of the year for all of us football fans, and we probably have the biggest guy who has changed <laughs> squads this year in yes. free agency, and big Christian Wilkins, as you can see there, Gardner Minshew, a quarterback, and the running back, uh, Madison, and the Titan Harris Bryant. But we want to start off, of course, with the big guy in the middle of the football field, defensive tackle extraordinaire, Christian Wilkins. Well, I think if you look at the graph you just saw, they retained a couple of players, including Andre James, yeah. the center here, which sends a message of the priority on the offensive line. You can't lose the center here. So they got some depth there, and we'll talk about that coming up a little bit later on with Tom Telesco, the GM of the team. But Christian Wilkins is a beast. <laughs> and for him to leave Miami is even a bigger story. Yes. Because I watched a lot of hard knocks on HBO the midseason, and he was the featured player on that show. His energy, his excitement, his dominance overall I thought was very important. I never dreamed that he would be available. <laughs> That's the type of guy you continue to re-sign your franchise. And when we found out that he was coming here, I said, wait a second. Yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, I got to call Max. <laughs> I got to find out what's going That's on here. Right. So they got an impact player, and I thought that was very important. You don't have to go crazy and spend all your free agent dollars on right. one player or two, but they got the guy they had to get. Yeah, whenever you're trying to build a defense, there's one or two ways you can do it. You can go either back to front, meaning build that secondary similar to what the Seattle Seahawks Seahawks were in the Legion of Boom, and then you kind of go forward. This, though, you start with the strength, because we all know Max Crosby is one of the best players in the National Football League, and when you have an opportunity to help him be just more dominant, getting in a guy who can play inside, who can beat the double team, has great technique. That's the one thing that jumped off to me, mm -hmm. JT, in watching film, was it just wasn't a guy who's going to use his power just run you over. Just great technique. Power to speed, great arm movement, understanding kind of what's happening in front of him, being able to run sideline to sideline. That's going to help Max tremendously. Also, the last couple of games, we saw the emergence of Max Koontz. But this young man here, he has the Raider spirit, the Raider attitude, and really a dominant player in the middle of the football field. Look, just look at the tackles and the volume <laughs> and what he was able to do. So getting yeah. back to what I saw in hard knocks and then looking at film and going back and studying him, he demands the double team on every play. And it's been tough for the Raiders because they have some good defensive yes. tackles that they re-signed right. that we'll get to here. But this guy's a difference maker. I love players who stay on the field for three downs. Yeah. Where t traditionally a defensive tackle, you take them off on third down. Sometimes you this do. is the opposite of that. Yeah. This guy yeah. is a beast on third down. So with Max, Malcolm Koontz, what's going to happen with the rest of this defensive line and that defensive tackle room? You have one of the best players in football that became available. I give Tom Telesco a lot of credit, and I can't wait to talk to him on this because he jumped on this player. Yeah. He would have got away to another team. He yeah. easily would have got away the day right. that he got signed and the Raiders bring in a base. Yeah, JT, we've been around a lot of football and uh, been around some extraordinary great defensive yes. line. <laughs> First with Reggie White, and Reggie played inside at times when we went to the Eagle defense or the Bear front. Uh, you love his explosiveness. That's what it seemed like in watching film is the explosiveness. Jerome Brown another mm -hmm. guy I played with. Just great explosiveness, being able to work with his hands, push in a pocket. The late uh, Daryl Russell, another oh, player, player who played in the middle of the football field who was really what we call twitchy, right? You have a big guy who's twitchy, he's fast, probably can dunk a basketball, great athlete. That's what jumped off the film for me. And then to add to that, 
just the, the, the gamesmanship or the showmanship he had after making a big play. I think he works terrifically with Max Crosby. I think these two guys can really help this defensive uh, football team reach a new level. We started off you know, up and down Rocky mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. We finished the season defensively very strong last year, and I think this is a great addition to this football team to get Antonio Pierce's uh, tenure started correctly. Yeah, and one other thing I wanted to bring up, I just love him from a media perspective. Yeah. Right? I, I, we've got another guy in the building here right. who instantly embraced the history of the Raiders, his teammates. You look like this is another guy who wanted to be a Raider if he yeah. had the chance, right. and he is. And I, I look at him, and he's got to have a big year this year because this team, to. This team is built on their defenses, yeah. I'm trying to tweak the roster on offense, and there's still some more work to do. But to have a pro bowl or a guy who can be a perennial all pro along with Max Crosby, remember, Max has just started I in know. his career, and now Max gets a teammate like this along the way. I can't imagine the type of damage they're going to do. Oh, yeah, and the, the fact that in this conference, in this division that we're playing in, which is so offensive heavy, to have a – a mindset of, you know what, yeah, I, I know there's a lot of great offensive players in this league, but you know what, when we turn on the film defensively, is this is how we're going to build our football team. We're going to be a tough, physical football team, and you're going to have to respect this defense, and we already know the respect around this league of Max Crosby and what he does each and every week. Like we talked about later on the season, we saw just an emergence of Koontz. We see here the guys celebrate. That's what it's all about, having a football team that you can be proud of, as this Raider Nation is proud of defensively, and now this defensive tackle is just going to help elevate this football team on the defensive side of the ball. Well, Butler and Jenkins are back, and they're good players. They are. And think of what they're going to be able to do now because they're in a rotation yep. where one guy probably is not going to come out of the rotation much. you got two guys that don't want to come off the field. Think of the fresh legs yeah. that Patrick Graham is going to have at the defensive tackle position. Look, Chris Jones is the best defensive tackle in football with yep. the Super Bowls, and he's staying in Kansas City. And now we got a guy who can match him right there with that type of energy. And the AFC West battles are going to be really good now with the Raiders <laughs> up front. But I That's like right. Jenkins. I think he earned his way back on this yep. football team. Butler's a good player. So to have guys in there that are embracing someone who's getting more money, a bigger name coming in here, it just shows that this team is on the same page and they got a big superstar coming in. They do. And it's really about the foundation of this football team and what these coaches are going to do to evaluate and allow these players to be a little bit better. I thought we hit, we saw at the end of the season, defensively especially, get better by being coached differently. And I thought AP did an amazing job uh, getting these guys ready each and every week. And they really took advantage, you know, of the opportunities they were presented, understanding that, you know, we have to play hard. Mm -hmm. And it's not a guarantee that Coach Antonio Pierce gets this job. But defensively, I thought every single week they went out and we saw their best ball. And on defensive line, you need that great rotation. You need guys hungry, wanting to be in the football game in those critical times uh, late in the games. And, and I tell you, when you have opportunities to get Max and Malcolm one-on-one -on -one because your defensive tackles are disrupting plays. Look at our big guy running for a touchdown. When you have those explosive plays, guys making it like that, those are the ways that you win football games in this really competitive division that we're in in the AFC West. I look at Byron Young, who was drafted third round out of Alabama. They got to get him going. Yep. Nestor Jade Silvera, a good player that they like. Butler Jenkins and Adam Butler and his ability to play. And now you add in Christian Wilkins. And look, that, that's going to be pared down a lot. That's yep. going to be pared down. Yep, it will and be. it's going to be competitive in camp here because – if you thought it was tough to get snaps around here last year <laughs> on defense, yeah, yeah. when Max wouldn't come out, they're I like, know. hey, Max wouldn't even look That's right. at Patrick Graham. Yeah. What's going to happen now when these guys all want to stay on the field? I like this unit, and I said I never thought I would say this at the defensive tackle position. We've drafted a bunch of guys over the last couple of years that didn't work out at that position, right. developmental players, no problem with yep, that. Yep. But now you solve a problem. Yes. And now you go into the draft coming up here, and defensive tackle is no longer a priority. If you right. get a good player at defensive tackle, great. If he's the best available player yeah. at some pick. But now that's something we don't have to focus on coming up on the draft. Yeah, JT, that's been this organization's history. Yeah. You know, if, if a position doesn't work out, you find a way to go out and get one of the best guys at that position. You bring him over, and he becomes a Raider, and he becomes a Raider for the rest of his career. We've done that so many times in this organization, and this is one other factor uh, about being a, 
a, a championship caliber football team is you have to find a way to go get players to make your strong suits even better. And our demons of line to end of the year playing really high. This is only going to add to that as, as far as this Raider team is involved. Yeah, we saw Tyree Wilson pick it up when he got. Yeah. He was injured in the beginning when he was drafted, played better down the stretch. And here's what Christian Wilkins says about him. I'm really excited to get around Tyree truly because, um, you know, just, you know, even with all this going on, I think, you know, about my journey and reflecting back on, you know, my, you know, my path kind of getting here and the way it looked for me my rookie year, I, I didn't think I'd be in this position. I didn't think I'd be in front of you guys, you know. Um, so i definitely going to make it a, a goal of mine to, to help him out as much as I can, be there for him in any way he needs me, because uh, I know, you know, how difficult it can be, the pressures and all that other stuff, the expectations and all that. I always love a great wow. mentor and someone who can see that. Yeah. That was sharp. I, I couldn't believe that press conference that he said that there. That's encouraging going forward for young Tyree. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of those uh, late 90s teams, you know, Eric Turner, myself, uh, Anthony Newman, when we spoke about Charles Woodson mm -hmm. and yeah. knowing that he was going to be an amazing, great player. Uh, we just have to find a way to, to get him in the right track. So you have some guys, and he's, he already has Max in the building, and we know that, right? So Max is someone who's going to show you how you do it. You know, he's not really going to talk much. He's going to show you the everyday work. And so if you learn that way, great. Sometimes players learn different ways, and so maybe Christian's going to be more vocal uh, with Tyree. And Tyree's going to be a really good player. I love his versatility. We saw some really sparks there. And I think with the two leadership guys in, the, in, his, in his meeting rooms, I think he's gonna really going to grow this year. When we come back on our free agency show, Gardner Minshew. Wow, what a character this guy is. Yep. We'll welcome him in. And then Tom Telesco will join us. Excited about that conversation coming up. The GM of the Silver and Black as we continue. Brought to you by Allegiant. We told the state of Nevada Touchdown! that you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You got to stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night, one cause, one nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. Secure your spot today. And we go back to last year, Christian. I mean, the, really the heartbeat of this team was the defense, the defensive right. line in particular. And coming into free agency, coming into the offseason, the fans are pounding the desk saying, get Max Crosby some help, right. get Max Crosby some help. Well, help has arrived in a very big, substantive way. Like, how yeah. stoked are you the chance to work with number 98? Man, I'm, I'm really excited for that just because, again, like, Max Max, probably my, my favorite my favorite player in the league. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here now, but I've always felt that way. Again, he just does everything the right way. He handles his business. He plays with a motor, plays with passion, and you just see that. And it's clear and I think that's why he's so well respected around the league is just because you know he just does it all the time consistently non-stop and how can you not want to play with a guy like that and you know and then there's other guys on the D-line too you know that um, you know and just on the defense as well that you know you want to play with too you know what I mean just because they're they're gritty they're they're tough they're nasty there's some dogs in there and you know I just want to be able to like I said add to it in any way I can if it's uh, if it's family friendly what did Max say to you when we when he found out that you were you were coming to Vegas uh, let's yeah like he's just saying let's go baby like you know I'm excited yeah I'll keep the I'll keep the clean stuff, yeah like, family friendly stuff <laughs> that's my no. ass that's no, exactly ass, yeah. no he's just like let's go like I'm excited like I'm glad you're gonna be a part of it and you know I'm just like hey bro like I'm I'm just glad I could come here be a part of it with you and help you out and let, let's just go win to be a Raider is to be bold, powerful, and loyal. What's a Raider? Always a Raider. The Raider Nation family is authentic. With the heart here in Las Vegas, we are often imitated, but can never be duplicated. Why? The autumn wind is a Raider. Because there is only one nation. Raider Nation, this is Gardner Minshew. I'm so fired up to be here. 
excited for this season and ready to go win, baby. Another fake, Minshew has a man wide open, and he's got the completion. Fake handoff to Moss, Minshew, Minshew, and touchdown. Man, I was so excited when I found out I was going to be a Raider. Man, this organization has so much tradition, so much history, and I've always felt like uh, it really fit my personality and the way I play, and man, it just feels like such a fit, and I'm so happy to be here. Minshew. Floating got a man caught for the touchdown. Will that boy? Dude, Max Crosby is so damn angry. Bro, he cut his. Just... Well, like the thing is, like he's not really that angry. I know, right? He just calls. He keeps calling everybody little ass boy. Hey, little ass boy. I'm like, I'm little out here, but not always, you know. Oh, it's hilarious. That was like one of the most fun games to me in this season. You love playing against guys that are so uber competitive, you know, and that's definitely what he is. He's so driven. But you definitely like having those guys on your team way more than playing against you. So excited to play uh, alongside Max. Big ass boy, got it. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I've learned so much from my experience so far. But at the end of the day, no matter what you do, no matter how you play, it's about getting those wins, man. However you got to win, offense, defense, special teams, you just got to find a way. Welcome back to the 2024 Raiders Free Agency Show. I can do an hour special on that guy. Yeah. He's yep. something. Gardner Minshew, Minshew mania. He's another quarterback now in the quarterback room. And I think the Raiders got a good guy here. We'll see what happens with him with competition coming up. But he's won a lot of games. He yeah. closed out the Oakland Coliseum, last quarterback <laughs> to win there. I know. Beat the Raiders in the past. And I think he embraces what's in front of him here. Yeah, he does. And he's a pro. And that's yeah. what uh, you love to see is a guy who's going to come in and, and not afraid of competition. And that's what makes us all a little bit better is to have that great competition. But when you throw the film on, you want to see can he make those pro throws? Can he, can he anticipate? Mm -hmm. Can he throw a ball into a tight window? Is he going to shy away from contact? We love this aspect of his game, yes. the mobility. That was the design run right there. Not saying that we're going to have those design runs, but he's shown that he can get outside the pocket and make some really good uh, yards with his, with his legs. And then the deep ball. I mean, there's several times on film that we see the deep ball, but I love his accuracy, his anticipation on throws, and he just wants to win. And you love that uh, that spirit about him, and that that highlight and that clip of him going against Max. That's, that's pretty good stuff. All these highlights are great because he can make every throw. Yeah. He can make every throw, and he can run. Now he's primarily not a running quarterback. Right, he does right. unscripted plays, but I tell you, he starts games, he wins games, he can put up big numbers here, and I just love him. I had him on radio, EA, and he mentioned Fred Bolitnikov, Ray Guy, <laughs> and Ken Stabler, and that wasn't scripted. I was right, like, wait right. a second, yeah. what is this guy doing here? So he understands the history of this team, and yep. he's made some big plays in this league recently. Yes, and I think what's going to happen, and we'll talk about it with Tom Telesco coming up here. There was a run on quarterbacks, yep. and the Raiders needed to get one quickly. Jacoby right. Brissett's going. You know, we know that the best quarterbacks that were available, there was really only two. It was Russell Wilson had a very unique deal. Then there was Kirk Cousins. Then you look at the rest of them, he was the best of all the other remaining quarterbacks, and Tom got him in here. And you have to find a way to get someone in here who's going to be able to compete against, you know, Aiden, of course, who's yeah. in the building. But if he is able to be the starting and the number one quarterback, you have to feel comfortable he's going against the Chargers, the Chiefs, the Broncos. He has to give you a chance to win, and he can because he's just not a guy who's going to sit in the pocket. He's going to be able to be a playmaker at times and scramble and get out of uh, that, that pressure that teams are going to bring in and make a play downfield, you know, utilizing the off-platform throws, the arm angle throws. All those things are all in his clips that he's been successful at. Look, Aiden O'Connell proved himself here. He won yeah. games for Antonio Pierce, who went from interim head coach to full-time head coach. 
He's got a lot of supporters in this building. This yes. competition is going to be good because Aiden won games in the AFC West when the Raiders had to win games to yeah. keep him in the playoff line. He proved himself to me, and it's nice to see competition and two guys who get along, and I think they'll embrace the competition together. I think they will, and there's two different skill sets. Mm -hmm. One's a, you know, more traditional pocket passer. is going to really work off of play action, deep ball throws. It'll be a second year in one of the most difficult uh, divisions in all of football, and is getting used to the receivers and the lifestyle. And again, both these guys are going to learn off each other. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, Gartner is going to be the kind of guy that's going to back off of, of helping Aiden O'Connell Aiden O'Connell mature and be a good player. I think Aiden had an outstanding year for a rookie. Yeah, he did. Put in a situation that he was put in, wasn't thought of being a starter at the beginning of the season, had to work through some injuries, the coaching change, but at the end of the season, he won some big-time football games and really made some big throws. Aiden was the quarterback of record when they broke the franchise record of 63, <laughs> and he was the quarterback of record on Chris Christmas beating Kansas City yes. at Arrowhead. That's so that's right. something great for him. I'll just tell you this. Uh, Raider Nation is fired up about quarterbacks in the future. Yeah. And they got the 13th yeah. pick in the draft, and they are coming at us hard on this topic, <laughs> which I embrace. Let's take a look yep. at the quarterbacks here. Caleb Williams just had his pro day. Jaden Daniels, who's been spotted around the Raiders yes, in the has. past. The yes, connection to Antonio Pierce, Drake May. J.J. McCarthy, who's climbing up boards. Michael Penix Jr., uh -huh. who showed up on Daniel Jeremiah's draft board to the Raiders. Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler, who's got a big arm. This is a huge topic, and we are not running away from it. I'm embracing this topic. If the Raiders are able to move up and get one of these guys or stay where they're at, and they are going to be mentored by Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell for competition, yep. I'm fine with this. But this is what everybody's talking about, about around the Raider Nation, these prospects that are coming out. Yeah, for fan bases at this time of the year, if you don't have a quarterback, this is the talk. Yep. No matter what, this, this is the talk. Can you get a young quarterback? Can you get a franchise quarterback? And, and, and it's really about the opportunity if we are capable of getting one of these young guys outside of the number one guy in Caleb Williams is – can you get a guy to come in here and learn and not have to play right away? I think those are the type of players we forget about who are able to develop, mm -hmm. mature, and be really solid football players. You don't have the pressure to have to come in and win right away. Uh, this competition, we have a guy who's a traditional mm -hmm. pocket passer here. We have Minshew, who's experienced, has won some football games in the National Football League, and he's a little more mobile, and he's going to do some off-platform things. So whoever we bring here is going to get the opportunity, if we do, to learn from either one of these guys. There's no debate the Raiders can get a quarterback. Yeah. They can. Yeah. We just saw the list. They're available. The question is, do they want to move up? Do they want to stand pat? Do they want to move back and then come back in to the first round? We're going to see what Tom Telesco thinks about that. But I want to move to Andre James. I'm really happy for yes, him. Yes, me because too. Because he proved, and if you look at the grades from Pro Football Focus and the way he's played at the center position, Dylan Parham, Colton Miller, when you look at him, that's a guy that couldn't get out of the building here. You had to hold him in the building here because I think a couple other teams would have went after Andre James in free agency. I think so, too. And what did our organization do uh, this free agency period? One, take care of the middle of the football field on defense. And two, Good take point. care of the middle yes. of the football field on offense with Andre James as a center. You saw what impact uh, the change in coaches had with the running game at the end of the season. I thought right away did an outstanding job of zone uh, uh, zone runs, pin and pull runs, but it all starts with Andre James and his communication with the quarterback, whoever that's going to be going into the 2024 season. I thought that was necessary in getting someone who kind of knew the Raiders, wanted to be a Raider, and kind of Andre James is that kind of guy. Very versatile, but look at the Look at the penalties. win rate yeah. and the penalties. Oh, yes. This became a team that wasn't penalized. At the end they of throw the flags at the center position yes. all day long in the all NFL. Day long. Very disciplined player. Yeah, I mean, it was just amazing how uh, some of the things just kind of flipped the switch mm -hmm. after the coaching change. The penalties were it. Not a lot of holding penalties. Uh, running the football much better. I mean, the focus and the intent on taking care of the middle of the football field on both sides of the football were evident with what happened during free agency so far. Well, yeah, I think the Raiders have to improve on the right side. If we look at right yeah. guard, right tackle, yeah. Jermaine Illuminar left to go to the Giants. And we'll see what happens here along the way. The ability. There's a strong draft 
early for tackle. Yeah. Very early. And some depth at that position. And like I said, free agency isn't over yet. And right. You can go get a player there. I like experience at the position there. Uh-huh. Thayer Mumford is someone I'm going to be talking about a lot here. Dalton Wagner, who's here so far. There's going to be a lot of changes coming up here. I'm sensing that the Raiders are going to be very active maybe at the end of free agency and concentrate on the right side in the draft. What do you think? First of all, when I look at that uh, graphic, is Colton Miller's back and going to be healthy. I mean, that, that's, that's the one thing we're all excited about. I mean, he's the, the one guy who is the anchor of this offensive line, has done a really good job when healthy at left tackle. We just need to find a way to get that right tackle, either in the draft or through free agency, to be able to – kind of strengthen it up up front. And so we can go into the season and have that yeah. as a position of strength. And last year was just kind of up and down. It was last up and year. down. Yeah, particularly at the beginning of the year, kind of rotating guys. That needs to be a strength if we want to get done. What we need to get done is being able to run the football, you know, utilize the clock, play action pass, all that kind of stuff. Alexander Madison comes in as a running back here along with Zeus. And Zeus is lifting weights. Yeah. That, he, that doesn't look like a running back He's a back Greek to god me. right there. So I thought the Raiders were sharp and Tom was smart getting another running back with depth. Josh Jacobs is no longer here, and we yeah. wish him well. He we was do. a great Raider historically. He, yes. he moves on to Green Bay, and then Tom jumped in and got a versatile running back that the Raiders had to get to add to that room. Yeah, and that's what it's about, JT. It is about the room, the Raider running back room. Yeah. Now in the National Football League, you need a guy who you can count on to be able to average five, five and a half yards of carry on first and second down. You got someone who can come in on third down and catch the rock, but this is a great one-two punch here. He's someone who can really run behind pulling guards, uh, uh, trapping kind of guys. He's one guy to get upfield, get his pads leaning forward, finishing forward. He's a power runner. He's not talking about getting to the outside and running out of bounds. He wants to stick it right up the middle of the football field. He can catch the ball out the backfield, but it's a great combination you need to have in the National Football League at running back. Look at him catch the ball. I love that about him. That's very important in this offense coming up with Luke Getze. They're going to have to make sure they do a good job, and they got to pick up on this. 10-plus yard runs last I mean, you look at yards per attempt here, 28th, yards per game. The Raiders cannot go into the season thinking 90 yards a game is acceptable. No. This, these numbers have to increase. They're going to have two backs who are workhorse guys who can run hard. They're going to have competition yep. here in the offseason. I love Zamir White. He proved it to me, oh, me too. in those final couple oh, of games where Josh couldn't go. So this is encouraging. I think they brought in another solid player who's going to help the organization. And that's really what it's about yeah. And this time uh, of the year for your football team is trying to find players who are going to improve the room, the running back room. You just can't have one guy anymore. It's about having guys who are able to come in and give that kind of break for your starter, mm. and it doesn't drop off much. They want to run it here. Important. They yeah. want to run it here. They want and to. And they want to take shots to Devontae, but they got to yeah. pick up big yards on the ground. When we come back, Tom Telesco will join us, the new GM of the Silver and Black, what he's done so far in free agency and looking ahead to the upcoming NFL Draft as we continue. Being a Raider at now is so much more than being a cheerleader. I think that's something so special about the sisterhood. Our legacy is huge. There is nothing like wearing this iconic uniform. You really do gain 31, 32 other sisters. You know, and it feels, we talked about it a lot last year, Gardner, it it felt very Raiders, right, for lack of a better term, especially when AP came to the big chair and some of the changes that he implemented, the smoking of the cigars in the locker room after the games, like, it just felt very Raiders. Uh, And and looking at social media the past couple of days when the fans found out that you're going to be joining us, they kind of said that same thing, where it just feels like Gardner has this Raider-type swagger, type of chip-on-the-shoulder kind of energy to him. And and is that kind of how you look at it, too, a little bit? Absolutely, man. Just win. That's that's all it is, you know. Um... You know, whatever we got to do, we're going to stra- scratch and claw and get it done. Uh, you know, I met Kenny, uh, Kenny Stabler back when I was in, like, seventh grade, man, and that was one of the coolest things. You know, the snake 
So I've always, you know, had a lot of respect for the uh, tradition of the franchise and uh, so happy to be a part of it. Where, where do you come across the snake as a young Gardner Minshew? Dude, I was at an Alabama spring game with a buddy of mine whose dad played there, John Mangum. Um, played there as an All-American. He's getting recognized. And we ended up like three seats away from the snake, man. He was looking cool. He had his shades on, hair back, you know. Man, still stuck with me. It is draft season, and with that, it's our pleasure now to welcome you to the Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. This is a very exciting time. We get a chance to join the nation, Raider Nation, talk a little bit about the draft. The Raiders very well positioned in terms of draft resources, draft capital. This will be a fascinating uh, watch as we get closer to the draft and kind of see how the Raiders put the pieces of the puzzle together. We've got a lot to cover here over the next eight weeks and so excited to be here on this Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. GM Tom Telesco is kind enough to join us. Tom, welcome into our studio. Great to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. This is a pretty, pretty interesting area here. Like, <laughs> there's about eight or nine people working outside here. Yeah. Huge TV studio, <laughs> and then this radio studio here. This is this is uh, this is the real deal. Yeah, this is where JT makes the magic. Right. Well, we have a lot of fun here. It's <laughs> great. Right fans. Right? It's great to have you j just down the hallway so we can talk yeah, to literally you. Literally, right down the hallway. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We want to begin. Congratulations on free agency, Christian Wilkins, a big time player. That that you were able to pull off quickly. Take us through that process. Yeah, you know, like the, as far as like the contract, that, that went pretty quickly, but the process really started from the day that I walked in the door, working with the pro staff and Dwayne Joseph on not just that position, but all positions as far as how we're going to look at free agency, who's available, who fits us the best, um, how that works in our salary cap, work with Tom Delaney on that, as far as how it kind of all fits into to the, to the big picture. Um, and, you know, we saw Christian as a, really unique opportunity because players like him usually don't become available in free agency. As far as a player um, in the prime of his career, um, has been healthy and durable throughout his career, which we're going to hopefully continue. That's continued to happen. Um, and uh, great makeup and character and really has played a high level for, for four years. It wasn't, this wasn't like a one-year uh, you know, contract guy. So, and he plays a position that's a premier position. It's hard to find. It's hard to find big people who have really great movement skills, explosiveness, can play the run in the pass. And um, what we've seen, now, if you want to win your division, in any division, um, you need to have a deep and talented defensive line. So he's going to add to that group. Uh, really excited to get that done. What a presence. Uh, when you turn on the film, you can see it right away. I mean, the, the technique, the speed, the power ratio, the playmaking ability. And when we start talking about defensive linemen making plays and healthy, we go to our guy, Max. So how does that, uh, this signing going to help uh, that defensive front and, and Max Crosby in particular. Yeah, there's no doubt it's going to help the whole front. It's going to help Max. Um, you know, you can't double everybody. Um, so somebody's getting a one-on-one -on -one somewhere to go win. And the more we guys, more guys we have up front to do that, the better. Um, even watching Tyree Wilson come into a second year, you know, playing some edge, probably playing some some inside on, on passing downs, possibly um, get different one-on-ones for for players. Um, but then even like a guy like Max, like you can double and triple him and it doesn't really matter either. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's amazing. And then even with Christian Wilkins, I mean, you still have to beat a double every now and then. But if you yeah. get a one-on-one, -on -one, you got to win that. And he wins a high percentage of them. Yeah, Malcolm Koontz also at yeah. the end of the season really took yes. off too. Yes. I was fascinated about the quarterback market and the way it was moving quickly. Then you get Gardner Minshew. And I thought that was fascinating after Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. The market started moving quickly. How quickly did you have to make a move to get a really good good quality player. Yeah, we, you had to move quick. And I think part of it, too, if you looked at last year, like how many quarterbacks went down with injuries, and it kind of just reminds you, like, you need more than one quarterback. You need at least two. Um, so, and I think a lot of teams see the same thing as far as investing in, in this position, um, not just with your starter. So a chance to, to add Gardner to the mix, have him come in and compete with Aiden. Um, Gardner, when he's ever he's had the chance to play, he's gone in and produced. Um, he had, plays with a certain moxie to him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's certainly a guy when you watch play, like, he just, to me, just screams Raider. Yeah. As far as how he plays, how he plays the game, his passion for it. Um, but uh, we're excited to have the Adam in the room. I think it'll even help Aiden because, you know, Gardner's been around a little bit, plays some different offenses, a little bit more of a veteran presence. So we're excited to have him. Yeah, this, this organization has been built on competition, right? And I like his little shake yeah. at the touchdowns. Speaking about competition, offensive line-wise, right? Up and down, some injuries last year. You know, right tackle could be, a, could be an issue. Where do you see the, run, the offensive line room going uh, thus far? Yeah, it's still a work in progress. And when we re-signed Andre James, 
uh, which I think was really important. Like having a center um, with some experience and some feel, especially when you have a young quarterback behind you, it's a big part of it. And I think he's going to fit the scheme. We're going to run really well. Um, and like you know, I've, I've watched Andre from from the outside looking in for a while. He's always been a really solid center. You got to have a good center in this league to, yeah. to play. So. And then I even think this scheme with, with Dylan Parham is really going to accentuate what he does well as far as reaching and running and getting people. Um, but it's still a work in progress. I know last year, you know, you know run game-wise, with you know, offensive line, tight ends, backs, and receivers you have to block. Like, you know, we were in the bottom five in, in rushing last year. You know, you pick whatever metric you want. So that has to improve. That will come from the whole group. Um, we're still getting that group together. You know, what I've seen of Thayer Munford is really interesting. I think he's a really interesting player, yeah. Um, yeah. whether it's a tackle or guard. Right. Um, so, you know, he'll, he'll be in the mix there. And then, um, you know, obviously having Colton Miller back healthy, which he will be, is a big part of it. He's, he's a big-time left tackle. Alexander Madison with uh, Zeus. When you look at the depth of that, Josh Jacobs is no longer here. Tell us about the new back he brought in, because very productive, also catching the ball out of the backfield. Yeah, you know, he, he's a pretty well-rounded player. I mean, he's mm-hmm. 220 pounds. Um, he runs physical and hard. He runs like a little bit of a violent style to him. Um, he's run the scheme that we're going to run. He, he ran this very similar first couple of years of Minnesota, so he has some familiarity with that. Um, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield, which you have to do. This is, this is a passing league. You've got to be able to get out and catch the ball in space. Um, he's still a pretty good athlete despite you know, his size. And uh, you know, it's going to be a committee of three or four backs. You know, mm-hmm. He'll be one of those kind of competing for carries. Uh, but he's always flashed there. Um, you know, we, the last team I was with, we played against him. He had over 100 yards, all-purpose yards. I think he had a good game against the Raiders as well last year. Um, but he's always been a really solid back, runs hard, runs tough. Yeah. No one's more excited about, you know, the guys up front than the secondary guys. Yeah. We always want to see, I mean, who are we signing? Matt, get after your guys. Talk to us a little bit about that secondary room. Jack seems to be the number one corner. Had some outstanding big-time plays last year. How is that room going to develop uh, around Jack? Yeah, I mean, it's – it's a relatively young room. I mean, you know, Hobbs is a proven player and, yeah, and a really right. good player. Yep. Um, and then, you know, Brandon Faison, I know he was hurt most of last year. I know the last staff has signed him, but he's had, you know, some good points of his career. But the rest of the guys are really young, um, including Jack. Um, but, man, he really flashed last year, certainly flashed here as a player. Um, you can't have enough good corners. You have right. to be able to cover people in this league. Um, you know, the rush helps, but you still got to cover. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's still a work in progress in that room. But we've got some – we have some pieces there. I think we'll probably have to – Add some more there just for, for good competition. And biggest thing is depth at that position. Yes. Because um, it just seems like, you know, once the season starts, you get into September, if you have some injuries at corner, they're just not easy to find. Right, yeah. yeah. Just not. They're just, you know, like so. And you need a lot of them. I'm so. here. I'm, I'm yeah, you got something. <laughs> you give us a player. To- <laughs> Finalist for the Hall of Fame this year. So you got the close. instincts. We know that. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to talk about your coaches. With AP, Luke Getze coming in. Patrick Graham had an unbelievable year. How is it for you getting to know the coaches, their style, and what they want to do with your vision? Yeah, it's been really cool. Um, you know, going through the meetings for, for our free agency, we, we meet with the coaches and then coming up with the draft in a couple of weeks, you start to get, or I start to get a really good feel for what they like in players, what fits in their scheme. Um, it's one thing for a coach to tell me what he's looking for. To me, I learn more from when we talk about a specific player and how he may fit, and then I also learn from actually seeing it on the field. I'm more of a visual person. I need to see it on the grass sometimes rather than just telling me. But what I learn a lot from is in the meetings. Uh, from Luke and from Patrick as far as what they're looking for, what, what style they will play in their defense, and, um, and obviously from AP as well. Um, so the free agency was fun. We don't talk about as many players in free agency because the pool is smaller. Draft, the pool is a lot bigger, and we'll go through every position, but it's a pretty fun process. Yeah. I'm going to take you back a little bit. What from those 91, 92, 93 Buffalo Bills huh. wow. did you see that kind of helped you build those rosters and look in those players' eyes and says, that's the guy over that guy? I'll tell you what. So I was in, I was in college then when I was interning in training camps. Those teams were so loaded with talent. <laughs> so that, was, good. that was pre-free agency. Yes. So guys couldn't move around as yeah. much. And, and offensive and defense-wise, so it was just loaded. But, um, you know, it, it's no surprise what you see from the guys from, like, from there, like Bruce Smith, Cornelius Bennett, and then, you know, Jim Kelly, Andre. I know Andre Reed pretty well. Yeah. Um, but that Thurman whole, was Thurman, awesome. but the whole group of guys is how much work they put in when they're not on the practice field as okay. far as in the weight room, um, in the meeting rooms, even back then. Um, the work, the preparation that goes into being an NFL player, which you know, yeah. it's a lot more than just we do in practice. Yeah. And because um, in this league, everybody's talented, but you got to find the edge. The edge is usually work ethic, passion, preparation. Um, and those teams had that. And top of that, they could handle adversity so well, which is why they went back 
the four straight Super Bowls after losing a Super Bowl and then coming back, coming back again. Like, I'd seen that, like nothing like that to have that mental toughness that you have to have right. that that whole team had. Um, so when we're looking at players, like mental toughness is a big trait we're looking for because things aren't easy in this league. You have down weeks, you have down games, you have down plays. You got to bounce back from that. Um, so that mental toughness factor, and that's I mean I saw that in spades with the Bills way back when. That's a big part of what we're looking for. One more on the upcoming draft, the 13th pick. There's a lot of talk outside from NFL Network, everyone else wondering, it's a high-value pick. Do you trade up? Do you stay where you are? Do you move back? You've been doing this a long time at a really high level. How do you handle all that chatter in the background, knowing that this is either a heavy quarterback draft, you can get a tackle or a corner there, as you prepare with your staff getting ready for this? Yeah, the chatter is for entertainment purposes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. I think it's fun, it for, yeah. it's fun for people to talk about because there's so many different scenarios that could happen. It's not like the baseball draft where there's no trades and you're Absolutely. kind of stuck and you're yeah. picking. And then also baseball, you're picking players that, you know, the fans don't even know who they are and you won't see them for three or four or five years. We're picking players that, you know, hopefully your first pick is, you know, contributing from day one. So, um, yeah, we just kind of do our process. What we try and do is prepare for every scenario, trade up, trade back. And if you can't do either of those, if you stick and pick what you're going to do, um, it's a huge preparation. That's really what it is to go through every possible scenario and talk it out beforehand. So when we're on the clock, something happens, we don't turn to each other and it's like, hey, what do you want to do now? <laughs> uh, we don't want to have that to happen. So we try and go through every possible scenario. Yeah, I, I saw you break down Kevin Costner's uh, role in, yeah. <laughs> in draft. How, how close is it you know, to, to draft day to, to the, uh, the, the acting yeah, train? Yeah, not real close. <laughs> yeah. Not real close. I, honestly, so I had not watched that movie before. They had, when I did that, that little thing on, on YouTube, um, they were showing me clips for the first time. Uh -huh. Actually, it was. I mean, they had some stuff they right some in there, lot, yeah. um, but obviously it was made, made, you know, made for a movie. <laughs> so there's some things didn't really apply, um, but it was certainly an interesting. And like I said, people love the draft. Yeah, yeah. They do. And, and just yeah. just seeing the, the the TV numbers uh, on the NFL Network for the combine is amazing to me because yeah. when I first started, the combine was empty. You know, there's no coverage. There weren't that much media there. Now, you know, it's people in the stands watching. You know, obviously people are watching on TV for, you know, four or five days. Uh, it's just a huge thing. Last one, a message to the fans, because you're getting established here. You're seeing Raider Nation all over the globe here. What's it been like, not only in Vegas, but the Combine as you're getting ready, free agency and all that? Can you tell us a story about this fan base? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, everywhere I go, <laughs> it's just amazing. You know, even in, in, uh, in Indianapolis at the airport, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going down an escalator, and I got some guy giving me a high five going out <laughs> the other way. Um, there's just I, I knew there were a lot of Raider fans, but it's just different when you're actually part of this and you feel it. Um, you know, I've had to go back to L.A. a couple times to, to see my family. And, and I mean, I knew there were a lot of Raider fans in Los Angeles, but there's a lot. Yeah. And a lot of, of there were friends of mine. I didn't even know they were Especially at the airport. <laughs> right. Because you do the airport oh, run all the yeah, way. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah. but it's just such a great passion for this team um, for the past and the future. Um, and there's, I mean, there's nothing like it. So it's been a great to be, I'm just happy to be a part of this. And, it, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure that comes with that, yeah. but it's fun. Yeah. You know, I want to be part of the group here, myself and AP and everybody to working to get this team where it needs to go. Thanks so much for coming in studio. That was a great. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. More when we come back on our 2024 free agency show. To be a Raider is to be bold, powerful. What's a Raider? Always a Raider. Raider Nation family is authentic. With the heart here in Las Vegas, we are often imitated, but can never be duplicated. Why? The autumn wind is a Raider. Because there is only one nation. It's intercepted down the sideline. We told the state of Nevada. Touchdown! That you're getting more than a football team. The highest point total in Raiders franchise history. You're getting an army. You gotta stay involved no matter what it is. We have a commitment to this community. And working in the community is the thing that we do the best. One night, one cause, one nation. Be there as we put the helmets down and our hands out in support of Nevada. Introducing the inaugural Las Vegas Raiders Foundation Silver and Black Gala. Featuring players, coaches, alumni, and entertainment. Join us in providing help and hope to those struggling with mental health issues. 
Secure your spot today. Being a Raider at now is so much more than being a cheerleader. I think that's something so special about the sisterhood. Our legacy is huge. There is nothing like wearing this iconic uniform. You really do gain 31, 32 other sisters. season and with that it's our pleasure now to welcome you to the Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. This is a very exciting time. We get a chance to join the nation, Raider Nation, talk a little bit about the draft. The Raiders very well positioned in terms of draft resources, draft capital. This will be a fascinating uh, watch as we get closer to the draft and kind of see how the Raiders put the pieces of the puzzle together. We've got a lot to cover here over the next eight weeks and so excited to be here on this Raiders NFL Draft Podcast. Yeah, when I found out I was going to be a Raider, just genuine excitement just for, you know, just being a part of the nation, being able to put on the silver and black, you know, can't help but want to be a part of it. Rambling to call different calls. Goff was under pressure and the pass is picked off. He was looking for Cooper Cup. Christian Wilkins comes up with the interception. First of his career. Uh, I'm, I'm all energy, so, you know, you'll, you'll see a lot of that out there on the field. That's just kind of who I am or what I do. Again, just playing with that passion and love. You're mad. You're mad. You're mad to it. You're mad. He said I'm ugly. I see he sees why I stay mad. That's funny. I'm cute. My mom told me I'm handsome. I'm big on, you know, the love and support of, of each other and just building that camaraderie and building a brotherhood because I'm nothing without those other 10 guys on the field around me and those other, you know, 52 guys in the locker room. So it's going to it's gonna be important, you know, to build this thing up. First and 10. They come through and they got him. Wilkins for a second time today. Miami breaks four. Allen in trouble. Lost the football is taken away from him. Christian Wilkins going in for the sack. Raider Nation, I'm just here to work. I'm happy to be a part of this place. And, you know, I just hope I ho hope I can deliver and that, you know, you guys will accept me and we can get this thing going and we get some wins. It's morphin' time. Welcome back to the Raiders Free Agency Show brought to you by Allegiance. EA, JT, as we continue on, we're talking about all the new players who came in, but EA, when players come in, players leave. Yeah. You've been through this before in your great career, and no bigger than Josh Jacobs oh, when it comes to that. Josh Look had a that. really good career here. Unfortunate, all players sometimes have to move on, but I tip my cap to him covering his entire career here, a great Raider. Yeah, I, I think Josh is going to have great things happen to him uh, in Green Bay. Uh, he's probably going to be in some, some big games, and uh, you love to see that about a young man, and I love the fact that he was a leader on this football team. Raider Nation loved Josh. Josh kind of took it on himself, you know, to win some big-time games for us, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's, it's not like running backs were able to do that that uh, as frequently as he was able to do here when he wore the silver and black. Amik played big around yes, here, too, he for an undersized guy. <laughs> yeah. He got into it. Love I wish me. him well. He's going to a Detroit team that had a chance to go to the Super Bowl yeah. last year. We also wish him well. We, we do. Big smile on his face, yeah. and the ball Good found guy. him all the time, good or bad. And uh, I just love the fact that he had so much energy and had so much confidence in himself, and it kind of uh, helped this uh, Raiders secondary uh, you know, have that kind of swagger about them last year. Great segue to the secondary here overall and what the Raiders have to do. I think there's good players here yes. on the roster. Yeah. I'm not surprised more weren't brought in, but I don't think Tom is going to be done yet. And then the draft, does it become a priority coming up here when it comes to cornerback? Yeah, I, I think so. I think you start with the secondary and you start with Jack. And, and Jack is the number one corner on this football team and how Jack plays in the secondary, that's kind of how the league looks at this secondary. But he has great help. I think both safeties last year had really good seasons. I thought Epps played well, but Jack, I mean, he's just so terrific in making those big plays, and he's cerebral. He's a student of the game. All those things you need for a corner to kind of get that thing started. Morig with the, with the picks, really staying deep, not allowing those big throws. Got Epps from 
uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles who had some big game experience, and he came over and was in the right place at the majority of the time. And then I just love the fact that our football team understood where Nate Hobbs was best, and that's yeah. inside. That's playing like that slash will linebacker. He does great in run support, can get underneath those in-breaking routes from tight ends and, and other receivers. And we didn't see a lot uh, last year of Brandon Faison because he was banged up, but he's another guy who can make some big plays for us, uh, and I think he has a, a bright future for himself. Kind of a young secondary, but I think we can use some help maybe in free agency or the draft. Let's keep it there with Jacorian Bennett. That's a very important player. Yes. Because he was drafted high. Uh -huh. They started him. He had to develop. And then Jack came in, and he didn't get as many reps. He's got to play big. We talked about Tyree Wilson. Yeah. Seventh overall. Yeah. Jacorian Bennett was a high draft pick here. That player has tremendous speed and upside. He's got to develop this offseason because I look at him this upcoming year as having like a second rookie year. Yes. If he can explode onto this. I know they're working with him behind the scenes to get him ready. Yeah, and it's all really about development. Mm -hmm. I, I remember early in training camp, he was a talk of training camp. He was. I mean, he really was. He was making some plays. When you go to the practices, he was making some tremendous plays from his athletic standpoint. But when you get into the league and guys start to see your film, they take advantage of those things. They're not going to throw the ball to the, to the veteran cornerback. They're going to really take their time and really prey upon you as a young player and kind of take advantage of some of your weaknesses. And then we were able to kind of have that defensive line kind of take advantage of some of those opportunities. But he does need to take a step in his second year as a pro. EA, let's take a look at a couple other free agents that still remain on the board here. And I know there's one right at the yeah, top right there at the that top. you've been looking at. Tell us about <laughs> Stephon yeah. Gilmore and if he's available. Yeah, you know, if he's available, that'd be a great pick for us. A veteran guy, you can probably get him for a nice price. He's been around some great, great defenses, been in the Super Bowl, has tremendous uh, just ball skills and a, another student of the game. He's going to come in and he's going to help that cornerback room get smarter and understand the game. He's been it, in it. He's seen it. He knows it. He'd be a great pickup for our young secondary uh, room to have a veteran presence to be able to handle some of those things. Then you look at uh, Dory Jackson, another yeah. guy. He's fast, mm -hmm. uh, but he may not play the type of system that we want. Uh, Let's see here. There's a couple of corners there, and I'm happy yeah. you brought that up because yeah. it's a new system, but not so much. Patrick Graham knows what he wants here. What I, the point I want to make on this, whoever is added to this defense, this defense does not have many remaining holes. Right. They have depth issues. Most of the starters are here because of Spillane and the ability of D Divine Diablo at the yeah. linebacker position, bringing yeah. in Wilkins. Then you look at the corners. I think we're safe at safety with right. two starters yep. there, but you yep. want some depth. One more corner, one more free corner. agency or high in the draft. Because if you don't take a corner high in the draft, then you're developing a corner. Yeah, yeah. and we already you know, have one. And I know develop. where you went in the draft. You didn't yeah. drop that far down right. there. So <laughs> if you can get a corner, I think that's going to be a priority coming up here. But I love the fact that this Raider defense with the addition of Christian Wilkins filled another hole. Right. I'm not using the word a lot of holes around here anymore because I think overall – one or two players away in regards to depth position. You're, you're right. And this Raider defense can really be what they expect to do coming into a huge year upcoming. Yeah, yeah. I think defensively is going to lead this football team the next couple years, and we're really about depth. You know, we have depth at the defensive line position. At linebacker, you really don't need depth. You need some guys who are going to play. Spillane has done an outstanding job. Divine also is going to come along. You need depth in the defensive backfield. You, mm -hmm. you have to have corners who are going to be able to kind of take – uh, the opportunities given if there uh, is an injury ahead of them and be able to step in and play without, you know, a decrease in performance. And I think that comes from a veteran. So that's why we talk about maybe Stephen Gilmore, Stephon Gilmore, uh, being able to come in, mm -hmm. be able to play when you need him, plug and play kind of guy. He's been around, has known the NFL. So we need that kind of depth right now in the defensive backfield. We want to thank Tom Telesco for joining us. That was yeah. a lot of fun. That was awesome. It yeah. was awesome. Getting to know him better. Yeah. Good guy. He's got some work in front of him. He's excited about the draft coming up. Thank you for joining us here. We had a lot of fun today. Yeah, coming back stuff. in the building. There's no <laughs> off season around the Raider Nation. That's Head right. to Raiders.com for all breaking news.